Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Ching, the CEO of Sotheby's Asia. The West Kowloon Cultural District is probably the most ambitious art and cultural project in the world. It is an international great arts and cultural hub being developed on 40 hectares of reclaimed land, the largest project of this kind in Hong Kong to date. Now, when all is completed, the district will have around 17 core art and cultural venues, including world-class museums, theaters, and concert halls. Now, one of the most high-profile museums in the district is no doubt the Hong Kong Palace Museum. Now, today, we are very honored to have Dr. Louis Ng, he's director of the Hong Kong Palace Museum. He's dedicated his life to the preservation, research, and promotion of history, art, and cultural heritage. Now, Dr. Ng is in charge of the development of the museum's strategic vision, exhibitions, and programming, as well as managing its collection and exhibitions. Dr. Ng, thank you very much. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. Now, tell us about this wonderful Hong Kong Palace Museum. I think for me, um, uh, as a museum professional, I feel very honored uh, to be involved in these uh, most exciting projects. Uh, so um, since I took over the um, uh, directorships, uh, my past uh, 14 months with the Hong Kong Palace Museums uh, have been uh, very busy, enjoyable, and uh, rewarding. Now, we all know about the Palace Museum in China, in Beijing, right? Which essentially is part of the Forbidden City, which was first, I think, built in the 15th century. The museum in Beijing, of course, is much larger, it's over 180 acres. It has an average of 15 million visitors every year. It has about 1.8 million exhibits. How is the, the, the museum in Hong Kong, the Palace Museum in Hong Kong, different from the Palace Museum in Beijing? Because obviously we cannot compete in terms of scale and a number of exhibits, but there mm -hmm. must be things that you can offer that they cannot. Yeah, yeah. How, how is this going to work? Uh, well, as you mentioned, uh, that uh, we are smaller in size, uh, but it's a very concise, I think, museum that we have a modern uh, museum building uh, designed by Rocco Yim, world famous local architect. And then uh, his idea uh, uh, is to combine the traditional Chinese architectural elements with our urban culture of Hong Kong. So I think firstly, I think the museum building, I think that's in entire difference. So for the exhibition galleries, um, uh, we have a, a total nine galleries for two types of exhibitions. Thematic exhibitions um, or meal for two or more years and special exhibitions from three to six months. So um, there will be the five uh, thematic galleries um, introduce the cultural history of the Palace Museum with exceptional words from his collections just now, just as a uh, printing, calligraphy, ceramics, textile, and historical documents. So in, the, in addition, there, uh, there will be two more thematic exhibition galleries. Um, one, we will look at the art collection in Hong Kong. It's a very, very interesting subject. Another is, uh, thematic exhibition gallery is designed for art experience for children and their families and does not involve the display of art objects. About the two special exhibition galleries, um, we will host exhibition organized by our curators in collaboration with our partners including the uh, Palace Museum. And this um, special exhibition, um, we present the finest works from leading cultural institutions. So we will bring, you know, that um, art treasure, you know, that from other museums in the world. So from what you have just said, you are not borrowing objects exclusively. You're not only showing objects exclusively no, no, from no. the Palace Museum in Beijing. No, no. No, no. And I think in future, um, about these um, nine galleries, five of them will be permanently used uh, for display of the um, art objects from Palace Museum. Um, there will be about 800 items. And also for the opening of the Hong Kong Palace Museum, you know, that in uh, 2022, these 800 pieces, objects, will be the largest group of objects that the Palace Museum lends to any institution. These um, um, purchase um, loans encompass all the key areas of the Palace Museum collections. Among the loans, um, 
about um, 20% are grade one objects, mm, e.g. Wang Wu. Mm -hmm. And many loans uh, will be traveled to Hong Kong or traveled outside mainland China for the first time. Because um, it's about our, our visions, that our vision is to uh, promote Chinese um, history and our culture. And in the meantime, we're going to uh, promote uh, the dialogue among different um, world civilizations. And uh, would you be able to tell us what, what your first uh, show is going to be? Or is that a secret? Oh, no, it's not a, a secret, actually. It, um, uh, I, I, we have planned to have some stakeholder con, uh, consultations from this, this year um, to let you know, the, our friends, our potential audience know about our future exhibition, um, education program, and other, um, you know, the other aspects of a service and work. As I mentioned that uh, when the museum is open in 2022, there will be nine open exhibitions. For the uh, first five galleries, we'll cover a journal history of the Palace Museum and Forbidden City, covering architecture, the relationship of Imperial China with other worlds, and the development of the uh, Palace Museum. This is introduction or orientation gallery. For the two special exhibitions, so we're going to have a one about um, Asian paintings, dated back to the Jin, Yun, Song Dynasty. So I, I, I wonder if you uh, still remember uh, this about uh, uh, in 2007 in Hong Kong Museum of Art, we organized a very major um, Asian Chinese printing and calligraphy exhibitions, which you know the huge success that we are going to another one uh, when the museum is okay. open. And we are also exploring whether we can bring uh, some objects from overseas, from France, uh, from the French museum, I think uh, to have a dialogue you know, with um, the past museum collections. So that's the thing that uh, we are going uh, to have uh, uh, when the museum is open and 2022, but we are now um, planning um, for the special exhibition beyond uh, 2022. Um, we are now uh, approaching different international museums to explore uh, possibility to bring their um, collections to Hong Kong uh, for enjoyment of Hong Kong people. So there is this collaboration between the Hong Kong Palace Museum and also the Palace Museum in Beijing. So. Is it a one-way thing or is it, a, is, if it's a collaboration, it's two-way. So do you envisage maybe one day that the Hong Kong Palace Museum will be actually exporting its own curated shows to China, to Beijing? I think that um, uh, we're going to establish, um, you know, the in-depth and uh, long-term uh, partnership uh, with the Palace Museum. Of course, they will uh, provide uh, collections for our display and their resources research material and also the expertise, you know that. But in the meantime that uh, for some uh, collaborative projects, we will form a team with curator from uh, two museums to work together maybe on uh, particular subjects, whether this is uh, exhibitions or research projects or uh, you know, a training program or ed education um, um, and, and, and projects. So the Hong Kong Palace Museum will be a game changes, I think, uh, to create a new role model for interpreting and presenting traditional Chinese art, because Hong Kong curators have their own perspective to see, to interpret uh, the Palace Museum collections. So through these uh, new perspectives and new interpretations, our visitors will have an in-depth understanding of a, a, a Chinese art history and culture, and we will identify opportunity that we can draw its hand with the Palace Museum to develop international collaborations. No, this is this is actually excellent uh, excellent news because uh, I think you were saying earlier that uh, one of the galleries or the muse your museum would actually be uh, reaching out to to families to children uh, because yeah. it's been said many times that that used to used to be the case that Hong Kong is a cultural desert yeah. and, and and also now uh, uh, some would say that the younger generation. In, in Hong Kong, you know, Hong Kong having been under colonial rule for such a long time that the younger generation uh, do not really know enough about their own history uh, and, and culture. 
uh, mm -hmm. of, of China, the motherland. Yeah, I entirely agree. It's not, I think it's not only the objects, you know, the, it's not only, you know, we are not talking about the 800s, but uh, the way how we present it, I think, uh, to our audience. Because by nature, um, our museum is a museum of antiquities because they are all lesser known treasure. They depend, you know, the two different dynasty period. And uh, we, we uh, present these imperial collections about the history and then importance in the art history of uh, the China. We will aim to add, attract uh, new and um, more audiences. Uh, we will adopt a, a record modern day approach by bringing traditional art and culture into modern lives. So each idea or object to be linked to the experience of its current and future audience. So um, this approach can help visitors to make meaning of the past or history by related to their uh, present lives and experience. How, how big is your museum, the total floor area? I think the total floor area is um, the GFA, the gross floor area is uh, 30,000 um, meters square, of which exhibition galleries is uh, around 8,000. So I think it's quite, I think, the, I think for the size similar to the Hong Kong Museum of Art Heritage Museum. Now you'll be showing a lot of national treasures. Are, are you able to reveal? Uh, security must be an issue. Yeah, um, yeah. There must be extra measures taken to, to make it more um, safe and, and uh, burglary proof. Oh, uh, well, I think the Hong Kong Palace Museum will have a state-of-the-art museum building. So I'm sure the absolute safety or heavy objects on display. This I can guarantee because it's uh, an unprecedented arrangement for the Palace Museum to land 800 objects, including many, many, you know, that are very important objects, the grade one objects. And they are all the finest objects, I think, in their collections. So we have to inspect and review the conditions of heavy objects because, you know, it's, it's still a, a long journey from Beijing to, uh, to Hong Kong. So uh, we have assessed whether they are suitable from conservation point of view to be brought to Hong Kong. And also because of this, um, you know, that this special arrangement, we have to seek a special approval from the relevant go uh, mainland government um, authorities uh, and arrange special arrangement for the shipping, insurance, storage, and display um, in, in the Hong Kong Palace Museum. It's very challenging. And also because we were under a very, very tight time frame. We formally kick off, um, um, uh, kick start the project in May uh, 2018, just um, two years ago. We have the grand breaking ceremony. We commenced the foundation work. We target to open the museum hopefully in June 2022. So we, it will take only four years. It's fast, but we will not compromise the quality and safety of these uh, national treasure. So about the safety you have mentioned, I think I can guarantee yeah. that should be no So problem. by the time you open in 2022, yes. am I correct to say that most of the other museums and venues at the West County Cultural District would have been built? Because you know, you know the whole district has been 20 years in the making. Yeah. So by when you open, I suppose the district will more or less be ready to open in, in full, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, the C we have opened the C Tree Center, Free Space Art Park last year, and then the Empress will be open next year. So uh, the Hong Kong Palace will open in 2022, the year, uh, the year after the Empress opening. That, I think, we are quite happy, I think, uh, to see many important projects in West Kowloon Cultural District has been delivered, I think, uh, in 2022. Well, that sounds all very exciting and uh, we look forward to, uh, to the opening when we, we can see some of our, our greatest national treasures uh, in Hong Kong, in West Kowloon, without having to go all the way to Beijing all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, assuming that COVID will be over and we can travel again, but uh, <laughs> but who knows? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lu Zing. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, you, we wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you.